Do you get frustrated with your kids when they don't listen or follow instructions? Yes! Well, we have a frustration buster for you. So, a big frustration for me is when my children don't listen to me after I thought that I had given them clear instructions. Yeah, it could be so frustrating, especially when everybody's like, yes, I understand, okay, mom. <laughs> and then nobody seems yeah, nobody to know what's does. going on. <laughs> and nobody does what you've told them. You're like, that, this isn't what I asked for. Yeah, that can be frustrating for them too. So we brainstormed and we came up with a frustration, frustration buster. buster. Frustration buster number two. Give clear instructions. So I know we said that that's what we think we do, but we came up with th ways to give clear instructions. One of the things that I have been doing is giving fewer instructions at a time. If you have a smaller child, I would do one instruction at a time. They're not capable of retaining more than one. Yeah, I was gonna say, our kids are older now. Right. Right. So you would think they kind of, their brains aren't fully developed no. until they're 25. Somebody just said 26, 26. the yeah. other day. Yeah. Even at that age, even into teenagerhood, they need fewer instructions at a time. As you give them these fewer instructions, repeat them, have them repeat it back to you. Right. And on top of that, I'll write it on the board. It's there for them to see if they forget. And it's still not always perfect, but it definitely diminishes the amount of frustration. Imagine all four kids coming and not knowing what, what did you say again? What did you say again? So I write stuff on the board all the time. I have a board in the kitchen, I have a board in the classroom, mm -hmm. a board upstairs so that we can be on the same page. Yes. <laughs> Tell them about the, how getting our brain engaged also helps. We have uh, learned about some brain tactics to help mm. retain information. So as you are giving instructions, have them do some crossovers. So crossovers are anything that has your body cross over to the other side, and that actually crosses the midline. And it, there's a brain integration that happens, and so therefore they are focusing on what you are telling them. So how you can have them do just something like this. Is this touching? Yeah, touching or your thigh or elbow or to knee. not even touching? Just you don't have to even touch it, but I mean, you know, kids want to touch. So, yeah. so have them touch their, their knee as you're talking to them and then have them repeat it back to you while they're crossing or anything to, to get their mind off of the fly on the wall or, you know, just anything right. they're going to daydream about. That will definitely help and it makes it fun too. Yeah. And then you're not going, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? You know, you know they're engaged. Yeah. And so. another thing I've noticed you do is tell them what we're not going to do. Right. <laughs> right. So especially with a, with a bigger group, like we do this a lot in co-op. Right. Know? So if, if we say, we are going to paint this way. So am I going to take my paintbrush and am I going to push it down on the paint? You know, because I already gave them the instructions on how to use a paintbrush, but now on what not to do. Am I going to take the paintbrush and smush it? No, you know, they'll repeat it back to Right. Me. And it, it sounds like it's redundant, but it's not because they sometimes don't realize, oh, this this isn't what you told me to do, you know? Exactly. So giving them that clear example of this is not what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. And also being specific about what the assignment is. Mm -hmm. I want you to do one full lesson of math. That includes all of these steps. If you don't finish all this math, in the hour or whatever the time frame is that you give them, you're going to do the rest for homework. Mm -hmm. We have homework in our house, which is usually less than a half hour of like stuff they didn't complete during right. school time. They know exactly how much I anticipate. If I give them a writing assignment, right. I need to tell them how many paragraphs. If I'm gonna say paragraph, they need to know what how many sentences is a paragraph. Right. Cause you know, most kids are gonna do the minimum. Yeah. Um, you know, some kids exceed that, but you need to lay out exactly what that minimum is. Yes. So that you get back what you want. Being clear of the process that it takes to accomplish that assignment. Oh, yeah. So like for writing assignments, um, we had mentioned in one of our other videos that we learned in one of the conferences that it's okay to handhold them every time mm -hmm. in the writing mm -hmm. process, even, even with math, some, you know, certain... Um, formulas or things that you need to do over and over it's okay to walk them through it over and over right and make those 
instructions clear so that they know how to get right because we're going for mastery mastery and enjoyment yes <laughs> we also want to encourage them to ask questions yes. for clarity mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than i know i've experienced it with somebody's giving me instructions and i don't feel like i can ask like questions. everybody else seems like they know what's right. going on so you pretend like you know what's going on and then you don't yeah. but we but we can't be angry when right. they come to us for that question so if you haven't watched frustration buster number one please check yeah. out that other video and it's hard but restrain yourself and going oh, you didn't hear me the first time <laughs> so the idea here is we're eliminating that frustration right. by taking these proactive steps but also managing our expectations mm -hmm. of what they can handle. You need to be realistic about mm -hmm. what they can do. Yeah, this was a big one for me because I, I seem to have very high expectations. I have high expectations for myself. Right. Therefore, I have high expectations for my children. I've had to really pray about that and be a lot more realistic, you know, like, Okay, why am I so upset that they can't get this done in a certain amount of time? My my kids are slow workers. They like to take their time. I like to take my time mm -hmm. doing things. And so I have diminished the amount of work that I do. And I've also established um, some catch-up days in, in my yes. family. Which has been great because then it there's not that pressure. You know, if they don't finish it, I know that I have that day where they can do, you know, tie those little loose ends mm -hmm. and it'll be fine. Well, we mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed these tips. Let us know in the comments what you have tried in your own classroom to help your children engage in these clear instructions that you're giving them. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with other homeschool moms. We'll see you next time.